An ominous symphony of raindrops slamming against my windows on a rainy Ashcroft night served as the beginning of everything. An uneasy feeling descended upon me when I arrived home after a long day. The constant rain outside seemed to reflect the unease rising inside. I changed out of my work clothes inside my apartment as raindrops tapped on the window pane, creating an ominous atmosphere. A sudden loud tap on the door broke the silence. A shudder rushed down my spine as my heart jumped into a frenetic rhythm. After quickly getting dressed, I cautiously walked up to the front door and peered through the window only to discover an empty porch, an eerie reminder of the unknowable. The sensation of being watched clung to me like a shadow. I woke up to yet another strange knock, this time at the unsettling hour of 6 a.m. as daylight broke, sending a spooky glow throughout my chamber. My heart beat faster, and I tried to convince myself that it was just a coincidence. I found myself checking the doorstep several hours later, but there were no delivery signs. The constant knocking persisted, chewing away at my sense of security with its unpredictable nature. Before leaving for work, I locked myself up and told myself it was probably a joke or a case of mistaken identity. I confided in acquaintances at work about my worries in the hopes of finding comfort in their assurances, only to discover that they shared my uncertainties. One night while I was returning home, the desolate streets seemed to go on forever, with danger waiting around every corner. When I got to my house, a figure sprinted out from the porch and vanished into the darkness as my car jerked to a stop. I was paralyzed by terror and sat still in my seat, my heart beating. After calling the police, the officer's arrival was not particularly consoling because there was no sign of a crime. I felt more exposed than previously after their leave. The strange figure was nowhere to be found in the days that followed, but I continued to feel watched, which made me question my sanity. My arrival home on a Wednesday night was greeted by an unnerving presence. A man was seated at my kitchen table, illuminated by the hallway light. As I recognized the face of my emotionally unstable ex-boyfriend from a year ago, dread overcame me. As he recited memorized lines, his lifeless eyes carried a hollow emptiness. I looked for a way out as I stifled my anxiety. As his rage erupted at my door, I sprinted up the stairs and barricaded myself in while making a 911 call. I trembled in fear with every hit, the wood groaning and splintering beneath the assault. As the cops showed up downstairs, they arrived too late to catch him. His footsteps disappeared. He was captured the next day at his flat, and his phone turned out to have hundreds of secretly snapped photos of my life. His bizarre infatuation was made clear during the court process, which made me face my worst fears. His obscene reasoning and threatening rhetoric drove me deeper into a nightmare. Though justice was served, the psychological scars he left behind served as a terrifying reminder of the darkness that might lurk just beyond our doors. I worked late hours at the scary neighborhood grocery shop in the lonesome village of Grimville, where shadows seemed to come alive in the pale moonlight during my gap year between high school and college. The lively atmosphere of the store changed into an eerie silence as the sun dipped below the horizon. The customers had left by the time the clock struck seven, leaving me alone with a tense feeling of expectation. My heart jumped one gloomy night as I made my way toward the dimly lighted parking lot and saw a car parked next to mine. I was compelled to examine closer after experiencing a strange sensation at the back of my neck. I froze as my eyes landed on the car's window. Inside, a man sat with his face contorted into a menacing grin and his eyes fixed on mine. I was overcome with fear, and I reflexively withdrew my attention from the unsettling presence in an effort to flee. I warily told the manager about the strange experience the next day in the hopes that they might have some kind of explanation. However, they simply brushed it off as a coincidental occurrence, leaving me all alone myself to face the growing fear. The man's disturbing presence reappeared night after night, following my every move within the shop. His icy, calculating eyes appeared to be watching every move I made. He was roaming the aisles aimlessly one eerie evening, 
and his sheer presence choked me. Even though I made every effort to avert his sight, something kept drawing my attention to him. I recognized his face from the parking lot, which sent a chill down my spine. The dread that had been building inside me was heightened by the knowledge that he wasn't just some random stranger. His intense look penetrated the quiet stillness and sent ice tendrils of goosebumps down my spine. It appeared as though he was only being malicious toward me. I longed for a customer to enter the store each night to break the unpleasant silence, but it stayed empty and reverberated with the mysterious man's unsettling vibe. He then stood in line at my checkout lane that terrifying evening with his eyes fixed on mine. I struggled to turn away as fear swept over me, but my eyes were restrained by an invisible force. I dared to believe that I had escaped his grasp as he finally walked away, but the nagging worry of his return persisted. An overwhelming sensation of impending doom overcame me as the days blurred into a terrifying haze. I was constantly on guard because I knew he may resurface at any time like a vengeful specter. He vanished into the darkness in an instant that felt like something out of a nightmare, leaving me terrified and shaken. In hopes that they would put an end to this ongoing horror, I called the police. However, despite their best efforts, they were unable to positively identify the individual from the hazy security film, leaving the case in the dark. I had had enough of the constant suffering. I broke my connection with the grocery shop and took the phantom of the evil man with me. I, a 22-year-old college student, used Tinder to connect with people while navigating the difficulties of social relationships in the enormous metropolis of Silverton. Natalia, a fellow student from my university, drew my attention among the numerous talks. I was eager to meet her, so I suggested we go out for coffee at a neighboring cafe. But when the time came, Natalia was nowhere to be found, leaving me confused and disappointed. The cafe rang with my alone. I came across a mysterious man in a car on my way back to campus who offered to drive me. My gut told me to refuse and carry on with my voyage, since my instincts were prickling with dread. The same car drew up next to me once more a week later, and I suddenly felt familiar. If I needed a ride back to university, the driver's voice pierced the air and asked. I once more felt a flash of dread and perplexity, but I quickly ignored him. How did he know where I was going remained an open issue. As soon as I was back in my dorm room, I made an effort to forget about the unsettling interactions by temporarily quitting Tinder. I tried to fight the shudder that swept down my spine as I thought of the unpleasant man in the automobile. As I started on my usual commute to work, I remained strong in my resolution to be watchful. Then it took place. The same vehicle and driver are stopped next to me. As soon as I recognized it from the day I returned from that deserted coffee date, panic welled up inside of me. I instinctively ignored him. But as soon as he got out of the car and began pursuing me on foot, my pulse began to accelerate. As I rushed down the pavement, fear erupted in every cell in my body, synchronizing with the beat of my racing heart. The stranger's presence gave off the impression of a stalking, dangerous shadow. In my hasty search for safety, I came upon a group of witnesses who offered me safety from his grasp. He eventually fled to his car, but even as I gathered my breath at work, the sounds of his pursuit lingered in my mind. I described the horrific incidents to the police in a flurry of feelings, and their prompt action resulted in the capture of the stranger. The disturbing reality came to light. The man had carefully gathered details about my life, my job, my daily routines, and my vulnerabilities. Under the pretense of Natalia on Tinder, I struggled with the disturbing thought that I had been unwittingly stalked for a full week as the gravity of what had happened weighed hard on me. This stranger's evil purpose gave me the willies and left a shadow of vulnerability over me that stuck to me like a second skin. The shadow of fear persisted even after the man had been apprehended. The once comfortable cityscape of Silverton is now shrouded in a veil of worry and potential danger because of my newly discovered skepticism, which extended to every internet connection. The experience taught me a terrifying lesson. The online world may be a haven for malicious intent, 
hiding secrets and purposes that escape even the most vigilant eye. The incident made me more alert, watchful, and skeptical of the sincerity of every online interaction.